Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Uh, this is Michael Schmela from Tire News. I'm the managing director, and I welcome all of you wherever you are in the US, in Europe, or in Asia, or even in Australia, to this uh, first uh, webinar of Tire News. Um, the first subject we've chosen is advanced solar module technologies. Um, it was one of our reports which we recently published um, and um, we've updated our research on that. We want to share that with you and we've invited um, some, some experts um, in this field who will contribute from, from their side um, how, how they think about advanced solar module technology. So on the one hand we have um, Shravan Chunduri, uh, the head of technology from our side, who was the, the lead author of, of that report. We have um, Dr. Hongbin Fang, who is the director of technical marketing from Longi Solar. He will focus mostly on bifacial technology and, um, and PERC um, mono um, cell technology. And then we have um, uh, an old friend, Doc, uh, Dr. Lars Podlovsky. Um, who is at the moment an executive board member at uh, the testing lab and uh, consultancy company PI Berlin. So um, let me also thank our sponsor, uh, which is Longi Solar, which made this year possible. And we are also very thankful to our supporter, that's the Asian Photovoltaic Industry Association, who is um, backing this, um, this webinar. So let me um, first um, give the floor to, to Shravan, who will um, summarize basically what we found out about, about advanced module technology. It's a big term, actually, advanced module technology. Um, but in the end, as you will see, and all you probably know, actually, it's like everything in photovoltaics for, for, for many years is incremental. And uh, a lot of things stay the same. The same and it's all about evolution and not about revolution, which is, I think, also a good thing. Shravan, please go ahead. Thank you very much for the introduction, Michael. Hello, everyone. Today, I am going to talk about um, advanced module uh, Um, so today I'm going to talk about advanced solar module technologies, how to optimize PV panels for higher output. So my presentation is basically, as Michael mentioned, is an adaptation of the Tayang News report on advanced module technology, which we released at the REA India show in Delhi. We are going to publish an update again at Delhi show. Here, uh, I would like to put an asterisk on advanced module technologies. Uh, what I mean by advanced module technologies is the basic structure of the module does not change much, but a little tweaking result in power boost. So, you know, as to the question of what really motivated us to do this report, in past module makers uh, were really uh, depending on uh, uh, cell level performance in order to improve the module level performance, but this is basically changing. Slowly, module makers are now very active in employing innovative approaches to improve the output power of the PV panels independent from cell level. So module efficiencies uh, and power ratings are improving. And uh, as module makers are working on several advanced module concepts, a sure indication uh, of this is increasing cell to module power uh, ratios, then increasing the number of bus bars from three to four, five, even six, fewer even evaluating uh, multi bus bar approach. Moving on to the next slide. So this slide shows about 
the ba basics of the module making. Um, as we all know, module has encapsulation on the both sides, glass on the front, back sheet on the rear side, and then aluminum frame. So going into the details first, I would like to talk about the key metrics of the solar modules. So one of the key metric of a module is power rating, which is also the sales metric. Here we listed the power ratings of commercial solar modules with 72 cell configuration from selected manufacturers. As you can see, innovative interconnection approach such as multi bus bar, uh, when combined with high efficiency cell architecture, uh, you know, results in high power rating of 410 watt, which is highest to best of our knowledge. So this is from uh, Neon2 module from LG. What is also interesting is P-type mono perk modules have about 360 watt labeled power, and then Adapting shingling technology leads to labeled wattage of 350 watt for a multi-module, which is around uh, 10 watt higher than a multi-perk. For example, here shown is a module from QCell. In the next slide, uh, the table lists uh, the power rating, the power rating of 60 cell module. We all know back contact is a premium technology. It is no surprise it is on the top. Um, you know, which is interesting is it, what is really interesting is a relatively simple technology like multi bus bar is uh, not too far again from LG. And uh, simple approaches like half cut perk cells can hit 330 watt. Uh, uh, level with 60 cell module configuration. Moving on to the next key metric of the solar module, um, which is uh, efficiency. And most straightforward uh, way to increase the module efficiency is to use high efficiency cells. Apparently, the back contact modules have the highest efficiency from Sun Power and LG, which is uh, 21.5 and 21.1 respectively. But what I really want to show is that uh, combining PERC, which is kind of a evolving technology and it is evolving as a new standard with rather simple change at the module level, such as a half cut cell, uh, it can attain efficiencies close to 20%. Then these advanced module technologies are expected to play a vital role in increasing the module power rating. Um, ITRPV, the recent uh, uh, study from the ITRPV expects that average module power rating would increase by 1.2% per year over the next 10 years. And uh, it's also interesting to see that many module makers are already five years ahead of the average. Then another important key metric uh, is uh, cell to module power ratio, which is, a, which is really a, a good metric to assess the PV panel uh, module power independent from the cell level. Yeah, I got the slide. So the module making induces losses as well as gains. The gains are mainly optical, which are due to the reflection from the cell metallization and back sheets. And uh, the losses are resistive, uh, optical, and also due to the mismatch. Um, one way to improve, or maybe there are two ways to improve the uh, CTM power ratio. One is to improve the light management and other uh, is to reduce the resistance losses. And uh, as to improve the light management, as you can see in the graph, the major uh, losses are contributed by glass reflection, uh, glass absorption losses, encapsulation, uh, absorption, encapsulation reflection, then cell-related reflections. The gains are 
you know, due to the total internal reflection from the cell surface and the encapsulation reflection. So that means um, the best way to improve the light management is to employ reflective uh, back sheets, uh, reflect, uh, reflective ribbons, and uh, white EVA. As for reducing the uh, the resistance losses, there are primarily two ways. Uh, one is like increasing number of bus bars, which also covers both increasing number of bus bars, like three, four, uh, uh, sorry, four, five, six, or even multi bus bar, then slicing the cell either into two or several strips. The latter uh, apparently is a is an approach for uh, shingle modules. And uh, CTM power ratio is actually not same for mono and multi. Cells with higher UV response and better texturing are less sensitive to encapsulation gains, which is the case of uh, mono. According to ITRPV, multi will hit 100% benchmark this year. Mono, uh, you know, reaching 98.5% in this year will be about uh, 101. 0.5 percent in another uh, 10 years and uh, really the uh, ctm power ratios hitting above 100 percent is a sure indication that module makers are able to uh, to improve the uh, pv module power independent from cell level then module makers are mainly working on six advanced concepts this is a glass to glass 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 modules uh, bifacial modules uh, half cut cells, shingles, more bus bars, and uh, multi bus bars. So, first, glass glass modules. Uh, glass glass module is nothing but replacing the back sheet with glass. The primary benefit here is uh, it lowers the degradation uh, to 0.45% compared to about 0.7% uh, with the glass back sheet configuration. Um, this straightaway enables extending the warranty lifespans of the modules uh, from uh, 25 years to 30 years. Here in the graph on the, on the bottom of the right side is a, uh, is a linear vari uh, warranty uh, assurance from Longi. Like most of the uh, module makers are offering 30 years uh, uh, warranty lifespan uh, for glass glass module. And the other benefit are providing better protection in harsh environments. The flip side of uh, glass glass module is uh, it increases the, the weight of the module by about uh, 20%. <clears throat> glass glass is also a key enabler for bifacial. And this slide I'm talking about bifacial. The advantage with bifacial is uh, nearly every advanced cell concept is bifacial in nature. Of course, this is at cell level. What it really means per module is uh, to make the rear cover transparent. Uh, it could be either glass or back sheet, though glass is mostly followed approach. Moving junction box to sides is an optional change. The gain in power with uh, bifacial varies between 5 to 30%, depending on the various conditions, such as site albedo, uh, device design, and, and mounting conditions. Uh, for details on bifacial, we have already published a report on bifacial technology in last June, and we are going to uh, uh, release an updated version at InterSolar Europe this year. And probably Hongbing will also provide more insight into the bifacial, the presentation coming up next. Moving on to another advanced uh, technology which is uh, half cut half cut approach is based on the fact that slicing cell into half reduces the losses to one fourth it provides an instant power boot in uh, by about five to six watts it can be more effective for uh, advanced uh, cell concepts with high currents such as uh, bifacial the flip side is it reduces the throughput of stringer by half and it needs an additional laser station to cut the cells. Overall, uh, costs of the technology uh, per piece level is slightly higher, but uh, it's almost the same uh, on a per watt basis. 
to the standard one uh, and uh, half cut cell is probably the next big thing that is going to happen many companies are following this approach then shingles is a nothing but extrapolated version of the half cells involving slicing the cells into several pieces the difference is the sliced strips are interconnected directly by placing them on each other similar to roof tiles there is a gain in output power for sure due to reducing the resistance losses so the the benefit similar to what you can get in half cells but the degree is very high so the approach also reduces the silver paste consumption and eliminates ribbons from the bill of material however the concept is uh, uh, more complex to execute in production still um, some companies are able to uh you know commercialize the technology seraphim solaria and sunpower are offering modules based on shingling technology commercially as we can see here shingling interconnection is resulting in a power gain of at least 15 watt compared to uh, reference perk module so this is a, a 60 cell multi-module from seraphim got 300 watt output compared to a reference q cells module is 285 uh, so uh, the, the graph shows there is at least a 15 watt uh, gain. Then the most simplest uh, way of reducing the resistance losses is uh, increasing number of bus bars. Um, it's actually uh, not new. There is a complete shift from three to four. Many are doing five, some with six. All leading stringing tool suppliers are offering tools to support this uh, move. It is the most simplest way to reduce the resistance losses. And uh, taking the idea of more bus bars to the next level lands into the multi bus bars arena. Here, several of thin copper wires are used for interconnection instead of uh, uh, flat ribbon strips. Um, So uh, here, uh, it, it also, uh, the concept also helps in reducing the finger width, which cuts the shading losses and lowers the paste consumption. Um, uh, one benefit also here is it employs bus bar less cells. That means there is another silver uh, saving factor. Uh, but uh, the flip side is it requires special interconnection tools. However, uh, companies like Mayor Burger and Schmidt have been offering suitable solution for multi bus bar approach as well. So, most of the advanced module technologies are really uh, uh, compatible uh, with each other and they are also complementary to each other, each other. That means they can be combined to implement it collectively to add up individual benefits. So, for example, a, a bifacial cell cut into two pieces or uh, into half pieces, uh, two half pieces and uh, uh, provided with glass glass uh, protection, it can be interconnected with multi bus bars. So uh, that means every more advanced module concept, the benefit at, at every stage can be added up to have real high benefit. Here it comes to my conclusion. There are uh, six advanced module concepts, double class, bifacial, half cells, shingles, more bus bars and multi bus bars. Uh, as, I, as you can see, so every concept has its own advantages, but also requires different degree of changes in production process. Um, effort to go to more bus bars is very low. Uh, so the benefit and uh, multi bus bar is uh, in addition to higher power gain, the, uh, it also saves silver at the cell level but requires special tools double glass improves the durability that's the main usp though there is no power gain here um, but double glass also is a key enabler for bifacial which is a really hot topic in these days uh, it can have a very high power uh, yield half cells is simple method and has a decent instant power gain shingles uh, is an extrapolation of half cells, but both in efforts as well as the power boost. And uh, this table here um, uh, actually shows, uh, it's taking some time. 
Yeah, so this table here shows uh, the summary of advanced module technologies explaining different characteristics of each approach. Uh, the table itself is a self-explanatory since there is no time you can go through the table when you download the presentation. Uh, thank you very much for your kind of attention. Thanks, Ravan, for this uh, nice overview. Um, so we go now um, somewhat deeper in, into one of the um, advanced uh, module technologies that we call it and that uh, that will be done by uh, Hongmin Fang from, from Longji who will talk about uh, solar bifacial perk technology. Hongmin, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Michael. Uh, since I don't have the control, Michael, please give me the control. Okay, it's a great pleasure for me to uh, share some of our learnings, some of our progress with everyone. And so on the latest uh, development on uh, monoperk and bifacial perk technology. Okay, monoperk, everyone is probably familiar with the monoperk technology and monoperk itself is a electrically bifacial design. And what we have done with the bifacial, enabled bifacial perk is just open up the backside aluminum paste in your printing. And instead of printing a blanket film on the backside, we print the aluminum fingers. So that part of the uh, solar cell on the backside is exposed uh, and can absorb light. And so this is a simple uh, change to the perk uh, process flow that enable the bifacial light absorption. The bifacial perk actually inherited all the advantage and benefit of mono perk uh, technology. And uh, mostly with the higher power output, it can have a significant you know, BOS savings compared to conventional you know, multi technology. And on top of that, we also have monoperk have has also demonstrated better energy yield. And this is a kilowatt hours of electricity generated per kilowatt. And this is again, you know, obtained through better temperature coefficient with the monoperk uh, cell and module and better low light performance. And also the lower, slightly lower operating temperatures with the higher efficiency module. So at Longji Solar, we have optimized the bifacial uh, technology uh, on, from both the cell and the module side, so that you know our bifacial LED is higher than 75%. This is a uh, uh, significantly higher than earlier version of bifacial perk technology in the market. And we, by using double glass lamination, we're able to extend the lifetime of the product to 30 years. This is another benefit can help people to uh, extend the lifetime of the product and gain, you know, generate more electricity, eventually lower, uh, lower down the LCOE. So the advantage with the bifacial perk uh, compared to, you know, uh, bifacial technology previously in the market, is that this bifacial perk technology is built upon a mature, you know, conventional perk. And so the front side efficiency is equivalent to the conventional perk. The manufacturing cost is comparable to conventional perk. And with additional light harvesting from the backside, additional 8 to 25% power gain can be realized. And so this is uh, with this technology, we think it can be applied to, you know, most of the utility uh, project, commercial rooftop and carport, and BIPV and BAPV. So this is electrical performance, you know, assuming you have a different backside gain 
on the bifacial modules. The baseline in the front side reading of its bifacial module, the current uh, performance about 360 watt for a 72 cell configuration. And no, in the most cases, you know, we can achieve you know 10 to 15 percent and uh, backside uh, power gain. Assuming it's a 10 percent, you will see that this uh, 360 watt module is performing uh, the equivalent of uh, more like a 396 watt you know, module, with most of the gain coming from the current. And while the uh, uh, the voltage of the module stays relatively constant, so event effectively basically the 18.3 percent module you know become a 20 and above you know uh, percent efficiency, which is uh, was only able to uh, reach by uh, advanced n-type solar cell technology like such as IBCs and head junctions. So with a you know inherited inherited low LID you know model perk technology combine that with the glass gas lamination, our bifacial perk you know modules we are able to offer uh, better warranty terms on our bifacial perk module, and with the first year degradation less than two percent and then 045 percent to the end of uh, thirty year. So at the end of thirty year, you can still have maintain about close to eighty five percent of the original power rate. The other, you know, competitive product in the market and the intern bifacial, this is the NPERT. And uh, comparing uh, bifacial perk to the NPERT modules, you can see that this bifacial perk is uh, more mature, you know, conventional P perk technology. The mass production, you know, cell efficiency is comparable to NPERT. Uh, and then, you know, looking at in the in the next couple of slides, I can show you that actually the P perk has a great potential to reach even higher you know efficiency compared to the perk the other advantage with a p perk is that we use a p type wafers which is uh, slightly cheaper than n type wafer and also the production line capex is lower where with a p perk uh, technology and n perk actually requires a few more steps and more complex process to enable uh, its uh, adoption the so overall is a cell magnitude. The main difference is cell manufa manufacturing cost is lower with a P per compared to the N per. And overall, I think the module cost is about five to six cents per watt lower using uh, bifacial perk versus you know N uh, per technology. So we think this bifacial perk module will be the most competitive bifacial product in the market. So this slide kind of summarizes our R&D you know, line performance and to show that you know, the roadmap we on the previous slide is very attainable. It's uh, very feasible and, and if uh, by any measure could be accelerated. And you can see here in our, uh, on the left side, it's a production, uh, it's a cell line, uh, cell efficiency verified by the third party. And you can see within uh, a year and a half, we're able to, you know, improve the cell efficiency on the conventional, you know, five bar spa, you know, perk cell from 21.6% to 23%, 23.6% uh, by the end of the year. So this is uh, within a year, we're able to improve that by 2%, absolute. And so you can see that, you know, the perk technology has a tremendous potential to reach higher and higher efficiency. And on the module side, we already demonstrated beginning of this year that 60 cell module can achieve you know 333 uh, watt, which is equivalent of the 20.4 percent module efficiency, and this is uh, the number that as a uh, Shravan already presented. This is uh, more than 20 percent. This is the number that previously only attainable by uh, advanced IBC and hydro junction you know technology. Right now, come combine you know uh high cell efficiency from the uh on the model perk with the uh, other module technology you can achieve you know higher than 20 uh, 20 percent uh, module efficiency we can uh foresee that this is a uh, this performance will be be able to translate into high volume manufacturing in the next couple of years
So the bifacial module, uh, not only being able to you know absorb light from the front side, can also absorb uh, the reflected light from the background and also scatter light in the ambient condition. And definitely the backside gain is also dependent on uh, the, the albedos, the reflectivity from the, uh, from the background. Here, we have two, you know, uh, project reference, uh, reference project to show you that the potential for bifacial perk technology on the backside end chain. And this first project is uh, on a fixed tail configuration. And it's a small system, about 19 kilowatt, and located in northern China. And so in these uh, three months, uh, field monitor data shows at about 11%. Uh, energy yield from the back of the module. And the next project is, is a bifacial module on, on a single axial tractor. This project is also located in northern China in the uh, province of Inner Mongolia. And so this is a, a 300, uh, more than 300 kilowatt system on a single axial tractor. Uh, on the same side, we also have you know multi modules on a fixed tail configuration, and also multi modules on the same single axial tractor. And the five months uh, field monitoring data shows that the mono uh, the bifacial perk module combined that with the tracker it demonstrated twenty seven percent higher energy yield compared to multi modules on a fixed tail configuration. If we remove that, the tracker impact by comparing bifacial modules on the tracker versus multi modules on the tracker, that relative energy gain is about 14%. And as you can see on the pictures, these actually the side are not engineered background. The, the side, uh, the land is mostly dry land with some grass growing. So with uh, this conventional, you know, normal, conditions, you can generally achieve 10 to 15 percent higher energy yield from the backside of the bifacial module. Uh, in summary, the bifacial modules inherited all the benefits of high efficiency mono perk modules. Uh, this is a high efficiency power density you know, from the mono perk, resulting in BOS, significant BOS savings. The perk modules also demonstrate higher energy yield with better low light performance and a better temperature coefficient. Besides, bifacial perk modules have demonstrated higher energy yield with the backside light harvest. And in most cases, 10 to 15%, you can go as high as 25 to 30% if you engineer the background. And further reducing, you know, this is a combine of higher energy yield and uh, from the front side, uh, from the model per technology and BOS savings and from the high density, you know, uh, power, how power, uh, high power density modules and combine that with the backside light harvesting and 10 to 15 percent uh, energy gain, you can further reduce the LCOE. So we think the bifacial perk is the best solution, best technology in the near future to lower LCOE. Yeah, thank you for your attention. Thanks, Hongbin. Um, great presentation. Um, um, what we are doing now is I think we move to, to Lars Podlowski, who will try to show us um, if there are any yeah, difficulties uh, or what are the difficulties and how you can overcome them when you, when you move to advanced module technology. Because um, on the one hand, it's of course nice to, uh, to move to higher power ratings or higher output but uh, the question is of course cost um, and the other question is of course um, will this be sustainable and uh, can the co quality be kept high um, Lars the floor is yours yes thank you very much and uh, a welcome also from me to to everyone here and uh, thanks Michael for giving me the opportunity to talk a little bit about what we see here as a test lab uh, for for advanced modules
We're trying to go to the next slide here. Uh, I think the re reaction time is slow. Um, okay. Min, can you check? Oh. No. Okay, good. Um, yeah, so I want to, I think uh, already you've seen the examples of new technologies. I will quickly go over that and then talk a little bit about the potential quality risk and uh, how, how do you do some kind of product testing? What do you have to keep in mind if you do product testing? And then actually I want to show you one case study that we have recently conducted uh, with, a, with a shingle panel design. So I'm sorry, the reaction time is really slow here. Okay, so PI Berlin, just, just a few words. We are, we are an independent uh, PV uh, lab and also a PV consulting firm. Um, so we have laboratories and we have a system engineering group, but also we have a small R&D team. And uh, so we have senior PV industry experts we have a long experience in PV module technology and product development, but also in uh, manufacturing. And uh, PI Berlin, as you can imagine, is uh, based in Berlin, Germany, with a headquarter. Um, but uh, we also have a lab in China, and uh, we have a subsidiary in India. And just recently, we acquired the company Solar Bayer, and now we also have a presence in the United States. So, so I will I will skip that. Um, there are just a few examples here. Uh, yeah, you see like double glass panels became popular, plus uh, bifacial panels uh, sometimes, not not uh, always. Um, Um, then half cut cells and the multi bus bar interconnection. And uh, if you look to the lower right hand uh, photo, you can maybe already see like one thing that we noticed that there are it is critical uh, to to introduce that kind of uh, multi bus bar design because uh, the interconnection is very different. You have a totally different screen print on the cells, and you have a totally different kind of of ribbon. And so the, the cross sections where the ribbon and the cell meet is very small. And what we have experienced uh, visiting some factories is that it's very easily, if you don't uh, process, uh, control the process very well, you can see uh, difficulties in getting a good solder bond for this uh, multi bus bar design. Then uh, we spoke about shingles, but also for shingles, there are different designs available in the market. Most common is, I would say, the center design with like 10 strings of something like 35 cells, but also different examples. And all these different types of panels uh, have their own um, yeah, advantages, but maybe also risks. Then uh, one example here where people try to combine everything. I think it was never a series product, but it was shown on the, on the last next show. It's a, it's a combination of cells which have been cut to half, plus using multi bus bar, plus using some kind of shingling or overlapping approach. So uh, people who try to apply any kind of advanced technology to, uh, to increase the module efficiency and the cell to module conversion factor. And some very strange things that I just don't want to get into that is, but you, you see also sexotic designs, like these are flexible CIGS cells, also shingled and also with a double glass structure, but this is something which is very unique and uh, has, it's not really relevant for, for the market here.
So uh, what kind of risk can apply to these new technologies? And uh, you have to consider what is different with these types for double glass. The difference is that you have a very rigid module rear side, um, which might cause delamination, for example. They come mostly frameless, which means they require different kind of mounting. And also you have to take care about packaging and transportation. And of course, uh, the, the edges are, are subject to potential uh, damages, which can then destroy the entire panel. For, for cut cells, no matter if it's half cells or even like smaller cells, you have to consider that you have simply more cells per panel. Uh, usually you have longer strings and that can uh, lead to some kind of hotspot issues. And uh, if you go to advanced interconnection, which can either be multi bus bar or shingling, or even like using conductive adhesives instead of soldering, uh, this is a very critical aspect um, because what is different is basically the interconnection at the entire current flow from one cell to the other cell. And as I've just shown you on this one uh, photo there from the multi bus bar cell, just the interface of the solar cell itself and the interconnector. Uh, can be very different and uh, you have to be very precise in manufacturing and because any kind of failure here on that bond of solar cell to the interconnector will cause higher res series resistance and losses. And also these kinds of strings uh, in the solar panel of course can, can have a very different mechanical stability. For my facial, uh, actually, what you have to consider is that these these products, as as we just learned from Longi, uh, are subject to higher currents, uh, and of course, you have to consider that the electric design, uh, mostly for the junction boxes and the bypass styles. So, what can you do in order to be sure that you have a good product? You you test, and actually, what you what you can do is like several things. Uh, Usually you have to make sure that the general design is good and you can do some kind of basically quick testing because a poor design will lead to some early infant mortality, which means in terms of climate chamber test panels will fail very quickly. But you also want to be sure uh, that the panels are, have a very long lifetime. Um, and what you do is uh, you try to find out about the long-term reliability. I'm still trying to find out how to go to the next slide here. And what you can see here, if you if you look what happened over the lifetime of the product is that after after usually for PV products decades of operations, you see the failure rate is increasing because the product is basically at the end of its lifetime. Uh, for whatever reasons, it can be because of raw materials, of material interactions in the panel, because of thermomechanical interactions between all products, but this actually will um, lead to a longer lifetime of the product. And this of course, as we just learned, also increases the LCOE. So we want to have a product which has a very long lifetime. And so if you do product testing, uh, so you're testing for, for, the, uh, for the general product design and you are testing uh, for a long lifetime here. So unfortunately, I still, I'm still not very smart in managing the flip over here from one side to the other slide, I, I apologize. So what you want to get is, you get that kind of famous bar tube curve, which means um, in the beginning you have, you have failures because of design and then after, at the end of the lifetime, you have failures just because of the, uh, of the long, um, of the reliability of the product. And the resulting curve is usually the blue curve here. Uh, for PV panels, um, usually the constant failure rate is very low because uh, if you have a good design and usually products have a good quality nowadays, then the failure rate um, in, the, uh, in, the, in the middle term of the lifetime of the product is, is fairly low. And um, it looks a little bit like this. You see the have early failures, uh, you have a very low failure rate, and then actually at the end, uh, of course, uh, finally the product is at the end of its lifetime. So what can you do to test about that? Um, you can do testing for early failures, 
And that is what is usually done by the standard testing for IEC or UL. Uh, you can also do some kind of special tests. I will come to that a little later. And what you test in terms of the uh, product reliability is some kind of threshold test, which means you make very long tests that, that a few companies are offering, like, like 3,000 hours Dampede or TC800 or a combination of Dampede and UV. Uh, so all that, those really long tests will give you information about uh, the long-term lifetime of the product. But what is special, which, which new technologies is um, that, that uh, you have, in order to really understand the product's properties, you have to do like special tests. Um, but what is that, that kind of special tests? No one tells you what it really is. Um, you need really like some kind of experts who are understanding PV technology and help you to, to tell you what, what are the right tests here. So, so what and how to test? Actually, a, a key message that I want you to remember is that for every product which is non-standard, of course, you need to test beyond standard uh, because the standards are, are designed uh, to, to verify like standard products, which means uh, what you do, and that is similar what also experienced companies like Longi are doing uh, through the product development, you conduct some kind of an FMEA, like a failure mode and effect analysis for the product design. And if it's possible also for manufacturing in order to find out what are the potential risks which are inherent to the design and to the manufacturing processes. And based on that, on these results, you conduct a, a DOE, a design of experiments, which then actually gives you some kind of a different uh, test process for that particular product. What you can eventually do, uh, that depends on the, on the product design, of course, uh, you can do a modeling, but what you need actually for every product, which is a non-standard product, you definitely need to involve PV technology experts. That's what the manufacturers are doing through the development, but also that you need to do, if you want to apply such a new product, you need to deeply understand really um, that kind of new products and how it might affect you and your business and, and the lifetime of, of your PV system, finally. So I want to just very quickly at the end, give you one example that we recently uh, conducted here. Uh, that is a case study for a hotspot analysis of the shingle panels. And it was done for the most popular, I would say, shingle panel design. It's a design for, shing for 10, shingles, um, 10 shingles of, of 35 cells each. And uh, as I told you at the beginning um, of, of the session, um, you have to be aware that such kind of products have many, many more solar cells than a regular product. And that is what uh, also uh, was causing our interest here. And actually all that work was done on behalf of a client. Um, and we were interested in that particular design uh, because you have uh, very long strings. You see normal strings that, uh, consist out of maximum 24 cells. Here you have 35 cells in a string. The usual 60 cell panel has three bypass diets. This product only has one bypass diet. And of course, what is special here is you have, yes, you have five strings in parallel, um, which also yeah, can affect or has definitely an effect on the, on the bypass diet. So, and um, what we did without going into details is we did a simulation here. So we have a, we have a simulation software which can model the IV curve of each and every panel under each and every condition, which means we made simulations here with different kinds of shading conditions and we made measurements uh, in order to verify uh, our simulations. Um, and the result actually was uh, very interesting. Uh, because what we found out is that for such kind of panels, it is that panel is some kind of safe uh, with respect to the standard conditions that, that IEC or UL requires for hotspots. But for this kind of product, there are worse conditions than what is required uh, than what is tested in the in the standards. 
which means the product will definitely pass any kind of standard if it's well manufactured. Uh, but uh, in reality, there are potential um, potential situations uh, under real life where there is a risk that uh, that the bypass diet might fail uh, at the, or solar cell might fail because of a hotspot here. So still trying to get actually to my to my last slide here and actually who's interested that that paper was just published at the annual module reliability workshop so as a quick summary uh, our suggestion always is to um so what happened now <laughs> yes to go uh, to act like in a in different phases uh, if you are if you want to understand a really new product uh, we you definitely have to do like an fmea at least the design of MEA and top, maybe a manufacturing FMEA with PV module experts who help you to, to design the right experiments. Um, if possible, you should conduct the modeling. And uh, then what people do is like a short testing program to confirm the general design in order to make sure that, that you have a low infant mortality rate. And then in order to verify the long lifetime, you conduct like a long thresher test um, because that's that's finally uh, gives you very valuable data to to be sure about the long lifetime of the product. Yes, uh, thank you for your attention. Thanks, Lars. Um, very insightful. Um, learned a lot. Um, and so let's uh, let's have a um, a panel discussion and a Q and A. So we we got um, uh, a number of uh, qu quite a number of questions um, here um, on on the control panel. So so maybe maybe let's start with uh, with with Hongbin and um, and 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 bifacial um, modules. I think one one question um, Hongbin a lot of people have is uh, still. How is um, the power rating for bifacial modules um, in general? And the second question is how is also um, the how are um, how are bifacial modules being priced? Um, so I think there are different approaches. Maybe you can let uh, the audience know how 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 Longji is uh, is doing that. So for in terms of power rating, we have been trying to, you know, uh, all the rating, the numbers I provided are looking at the front side power rating only, right? So what we are doing is we're going to measure both front side and back side SCC rating, right? And in terms of performance, we will, you know, like a front side will guarantee a certain being, you know, positive beaming, right? On the, like the conventional modules. And in the same time, we're also going to guarantee a bifacial ality. Basically, it's a 75%. We can guarantee that one, which means that the stand STC conditions, the backside power rating is more than 75% of the frontside power rating. And in terms of pricing, I think uh, we are always, you know, pricing uh, against the frontside power rating only. And uh, with, yeah, and so, so it's always relative, you know, reference to the front side power rating so that uh, the customer is clear about exactly what they are going to get. Hope that answered the question. Okay. Um, if not, um, um, okay. Yeah. So I think from, from my side, that's fine. So, so you mentioned also in your presentation, actually, that, um, that uh, bifacial modules um, are, um, are basically suitable, and you will see that also for for distributed uh, residential applications. Um, um, do, do you think that that will be, or do you think at some point bifacial modules will be the norm, and uh, you 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 don't care actually um, where where you place it um, because every module will be bifacial, or um, or do you think still that bifacial will Will be just applied for certain application, certain niches here and there. So, so what's your um, what's what's your take on that? And and what what is um, Longji actually also, um, pre or how is how they how are they preparing in terms of capacity and um, and how are you addressing that that market? Okay, 
I think in terms of application, right? So by facial module itself uh, can be applied to most of the uh, projects. This be it either utility project or distributed generation like a uh, commercial rooftop and carport. The only exception may be the residential rooftop, in which case that the module is sitting flat, you know, with a with a a roof, and which is going to prevent from you know significant you know backside absorption and uh, light absorption. So that's the only exception. I think other applications, most of the other applications, it's a uh, can you can use you know take advantage of uh, bifacial modules. Did that answer yeah. the question, or okay. there's uh, other part? And and in terms of um, um, capacity, or how much does um, Longji actually plan uh, plan to produce in terms of bifacial versus other? Mm. Um, okay. okay. So basically, uh, we are in the process of upgrading all internal capacity to mono perk. Once that's reached, right, obtained, and the switching between bifacial perk and the monofacial perk is at will, right? So basically, once we have this 100% capacity with the mono perk, then all the capacity can be utilized for you know bifacial manufacturing. Okay. Would that mean also when you when you prepare for that that all your modules would be glass glass modules um, to prepare for that, or are you even thinking about you could of course also stay with um, with um, with glass backsheet modules and use the transparent backsheets? So is there any um, preference? Yeah, current plan I think still you know doing glass glass for the bifacial and. Uh, on the other hand, you can also use conventional um, backsheet for the bifacial, bifacial cell. In that case, you still get a slightly higher, you know, power output from this bifacial technology. And in that case, that those modules can be utilized even on the residential rooftop. And so I think uh, what we are doing is, you know, the default still doing, you know, glass gas dimension for the bifacial. And that we should, uh, we can, once we upgrade everything to mono perk, then you can change between the mono facial and bifacial at will, right? Depends on the demand and supply. Okay. Um, there's also, let's stay with the bifacial, maybe first to Hongmin and then to, to, to Lars. Um, so the question is also, what, what are the preferred method, methods for testing bifacial in, in production um, and, and when it's coming out of productions? And, and and are there any any standards for for verifying the module power before it leaves uh, the the factory for bifacial modules? Uh, as I explained, I think earlier, I think we will measure both the front side and back side of the module, mm -hmm. right, at under STC condition, and so that give us the, the basic reading, and then the effective you know power output will depend on the background of the project. So it depends it depends on the setup. But that's uh, we are always at least you know measure the front side and the back side, and the front side reading is the reference for you know the of the module power output and also for uh, selling to the customers. Okay, um, Lars, um, have you already tested um, bifacial modules um, at, at at PI Berlin, and um, how, how do you see um, um, the, because I think the the standard I actually honestly don't know um, um, if it is, I think it, it was in the last stage, but it's not yet published. So uh, do you have, um, can you give us some some um, update on this? Yeah, I can do. Um, <clears throat> actually, yeah, we have tested by facial panels and actually, uh, yeah, the past months we have, we got like several uh, panels here into the lab for whatever reasons that either manufacturers wanted to have some indie kind, independent tests or also like downstream partners like EPCs, they are getting more and more interested in bifacial technology and wanted to have some kind of independent lab testing. Um, actually, it's interesting to hear that Longi uh, says they, uh, they, they are flashing from both sides because this seems to be the exception. Um, most companies that, that we come across, they are only flashing from the front side 
And then they have data, of course, from their engineering runs about the typical backside efficiency relative to front side. Um, and also the standard actually, with, which as you said, it's not like an official standard, but it's, it's already clear how it will look like. Uh, it's designed in a way that you can measure only from the front, that you only need like one flash, but that flash will at a, at a higher intensity which means it will be at 1100 watts per square meter in order to, uh, to test the higher, the higher current. Um, but uh, I, I think it's, the long -E approach is very good to really have two flashes from both sides, but this is the exception and yeah, the standard will not require that. Oh, just to clarify, I think that when I say we're going to do both front side and back side, the the front side will do on every module, but the back side will be on the sampling basis, right? Oh, okay. You can help okay. to do every single module. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I, um, are you, um, Hongbin, are you using or are you planning to um, to have any reflecting coding on, on the on the rear side glass also for, um, for um, bifacial? That's one question. I think that's under, that under development, under evaluation, uh, the new materials. Yeah, with the can hopefully you know boost the the the, the power output even higher. Okay, um, there's also a question regarding um, cost of bifacial cells. I think we can maybe even go a little bit broader also to 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 the other advanced technologies. Um, so so when you look um, at at production costs, where where do you see or for which of the advanced um, module technologies you see the the, the, the biggest hurdles actually to get into production and which is actually um, really coming. Maybe, I don't know, so is um, from, from the perspective of, of, of Longji. So I think we see um, 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 half cells, a lot, some company or several companies are, are really moving into, into half cells, especially in China and the Top Runners project, a lot of um, companies were um, doing that. So, so what are you seeing when you look at it from a cost perspective and what's the most attractive ones for you and, 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 and where are you going? We think, I think all those uh, potential uh, approaches are able to drive down, eventually can drive down the cost for the module. And this is a be the either half cell or bifacial and or you know uh even shingle right initially at, at least for the by uh, for the half part we see that you know you should be able to offer on a per watt basis actually better cost compared to the conventional uh full size module okay and and then and and, and and in terms of cost so if you would say so i think that costs um so 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 how, how much how much more is the production cost and percentages that's one question um in terms for for bifacial modules when you have mono perk anyway at some point we don't see an obvious you know price uh, the cost adders when you switch to 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 the bifacial and uh, you may have slightly you know need to optimize the process for glass gas laminations and there is some you know capacity need to add it for specific steps but other than that, you know, you don't see uh, obvious, you know, cost adders for, for bifacial. The bifacial uh, technology, I think, costs could be controlled well, you know, within the range of conventional model uh, facial product. Okay. When we talk about um, um, encapsulation, so for all the ad advanced technologies, so so that goes to to both of you, Longji and um, and and Pierre Berlin. Um, so, so what do you see? Will we stay with EVA? Are we th seeing actually more POE? Um, what, what's what's the trend? And actually, um, um, are there some some test results on 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 encapsulation? Uh, Pierre Berlin also has done. Actually, you know, even for the for the bifacial glass gas lamination, we already you know are using POE instead of EVA. Okay. Yeah, also right, like so there is a trend. Go ahead. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, there there is a trend as uh, as Songwin said uh, to move away from EVA to PoE, which has some kind of some some advantages from the from the chemistry. It uh, also is a, is a little more expensive. Uh, 
so in the lab here we don't have like any kind of statistics up to now uh, about like test results what we are currently doing we are currently conducting a specific test just on the pure encapsulation materials for, for 10 different types of materials, a very sophisticated test for any kind of properties, and that will be published at the PVSEC in Brussels in September. Okay, okay. And um, maybe one one question also regarding um, back sheets. Um, last have, have you actually tested bifacial modules with transparent back sheets in comparison to glass glass modules, and um, and what that means in terms of quality um, and output? No, we have not, uh, because all the all the bifacial products that came into our lab has been double glass panels. Um, I think the Honestly speaking, the only product, the only bifacial product, which is glass back sheet that I am currently aware of is the LG product. I'm not sure if there, maybe there are others in the market that, I, that I'm not aware of, but, but we see clearly the trend to, to bifacial double glass panels. Okay, okay. Um, so maybe I think we're running a little bit late. Um, so um, let's, um, maybe one final question. So to, to all of you, um, so, what what technology do you think will be the the most dominant in the next, um, let's say, um, yeah, two to four years? Um, so, will it be will be will it be BSF? Will we have PERC? Will we have PERT? Um, what what will be um, the or how much will be the share of um, heterojunction IBC? So, um, um, again, also mono multi um, versus um, Mono, can so so so. What do you see actually? Last, maybe you first. Yeah. So actually, clearly that is obvious, and everybody's aware of that trend to towards mono. Um, so it's clear that if efficiency does matter. Um, so it's uh, that efficiency has a value, and I think the uh, the industry was very successful to bring down the costs of mono. Um, currently, uh, yeah, the the. the the biggest market share there has uh, has has P mono. Um, I assume actually that uh, that N type mono will will have an increasing market share. Currently, the N type wafers are are still more expensive, uh, but I think that the discrepancy will go down. And um, and N type has some other advantages like no LID, for example. So I would expect like uh, N. And mono will be predominant, and we will see more n-type mono in the future. Hongbin like. <laughs> yeah, we think, you know, I think uh, the mono and uh, the shift basically, if you look at the, the price trend for the last 10, 15 years for the PV project, is that the module cost has dropped much faster rate. Right now, the module cost is a much smaller portion of the overall system cost. So just focusing on the module cost itself will have a limited impact on the overall system cost. So I think uh, improve the efficiency is the most effective way to reduce the overall system cost. And this is what we see, you know, some time ago, and we still seeing that. So that's why we have enabled the industry shift from multi to mono by providing supplying the, the industry with a low cost, lower cost, you know, mono wafers. And we see that the mono mono perk, including the bifacial perk, will be the dominant, you know, uh, uh, product in the in the in the near to mid term, right? That's the most effective way to lower the LCOE. The mono perk with the high, you know high efficiency, people are, it's become more and more important, and uh, with the higher energy yield from the bifacial backside, and that's another step up another big boost in terms of energy or in terms of another step down on the LCOE. Hope that okay. your you know question. Okay. Travan, you want to add anything or no I think uh, you asked most of the questions I wanted to ask. Okay, wonderful. Then thank you so much uh, to the panelists. Thanks to the audience for staying with us. That was our first um, webinar um, in a series for many more to come. Um, we've just uh, last month published our first uh, report this year. Um, it was a market survey on screen printers. 
We will soon publish a market survey on um, um, luminescence equipment, uh, followed by one on, um, on uh, reports on wafers and heterojunction technology. So um, we will also we are also planning to do webinars on on these reports. So stay tuned and hope you um, are with us when we have our next webinars. Thanks so much and have a nice day or evening. Bye bye.